what's up guys welcome back to my youtube channel if this is your first time here you are absolutely welcome my name is ayomide and on this channel i post diy sewing tutorials that is what you're going to find strictly on this channel tutorials about so many styles you can ever think of if you are a returning viewer i want to say a very big thank you to you thank you so much guys for always coming back and thank you for the support to everyone who takes out time to comment i really really want to appreciate you thank you so much this tutorial is a highly requested one i know a lot of people have been waiting for me to share something about how to make a trouser and here it is i will be sharing how i make trousers for my clients and trust me guys this tutorial you don't want to miss it and i'm sure you're going to learn a lot from this tutorial i also would like to say that i have an online class a highly detailed online class on how to cut and sew a trouser with front zipper and also a welt pocket to so that trouser class is highly detailed and if you're interested in the class it goes for just 2000 naira and the venue for the class is telegram once you pay you're going to be added to the group and you'd have access to the videos this tutorial today that i will be sharing is on how to cut and sew a trouser with side zip i will be sharing how you can fix a side zipper on your trouser and even when you have pockets because this trouser is going to be having side pockets so i'm going to be sharing with you guys the techniques by which you can fix zipper along the side of your trouser even when you have pockets so but if you want to learn how to fix your front zipper the zipper ply the shield the welt pocket everything intact even down to how to determine your crotch depth because for you to achieve a perfectly fitted trouser trust me you must get your crotch depth right and you must get your crotch extension right i gave a detailed explanation on that in the online class and it goes for just 2000 error and you have a lifetime access to that course meaning you can always go back you can download it to your phone and always go back to watch it whenever you think you need some clarification on some things now these are the materials i'm going to be working with i have my pattern paper right here i also have my pattern master i have my measuring tape paper scissors i have a pen a marker and a very long ruler this is because this is a long long trouser and i need to make use of a long ruler now let us get started i have my waistline all marked out already and i'm going to label that as the waistline i've also gone ahead to mark the crotch depth and i have the tie line also and equally i also have the knee line so this line here is my waist to knee so i have my knee line here i have the ankle line and that space over there is going to be my aiming allowance of two inches while taking my measurements i factor in the length of the band which is 1.5 inches so i deducted that from every other measurement that i was taking so i deducted 1.5 inches from my crotch depth my tie line knee line and also the ankle line i just thought to put this in here and this is how i do this for all of the trousers that i work with the next thing i'm doing is i'm going to be marking down a quarter of my hip measurements on the crotch line I'm going to be putting that same measurement on the waistline but I will deduct one inch from the measurement so if I'm marking 11 on the crotch line all I'll mark on the waistline is going to be 10 inches and I'm going to be connecting it together the next thing I'll do is to put a quarter of the waist measurement I'm going to be adding one inch for that allowance because I want to have a dart in the front and I'm going to be creating a curve. So this side here is going to be the side of the trouser while the other part would be the center front. Now from that measurement there, I'm going to be marking the crotch extension and this crotch extension I'm marking is what works well for this person and I calculated it from the measurements, okay? And after that, I'm going to be getting half of the entire measurement I have on the crotch line. So that would be the crotch extension plus the hip measurements. Getting half of that measurement, I'm going to be marking the measurements all the way down to the length of my trouser. Doing this helps you to place your measurements evenly. It helps you to place your knee measurements, 
your ankle round measurements evenly so you will need to get half of that on the tie line i'm going to be marking a quarter of the tie round measurement on both sides of the trouser and i'm taking that measurement from that gray line that i drew so i'll put a quarter of the tie round on that part of the trouser and a quarter of the tie round on the other part i'll do the same thing for the knee area a quarter here and a quarter of that here so in total i'm going to be having half of my measurements okay thereafter i would also connect them together and also connect from the crotch area to the tie area so if you are doing this this is what you should be doing also in order to get the measurements i'll place on my ankle line i'm going to be deducting one inch from my knee round this is because i don't want it to be too fitted but you could use your exact ankle round measurement if you want but for this trouser i don't want it to be too fitted so that's why i deducted one inch and i connected them together and i'm also drawing my crotch curve so in order to get my emin allowance properly i'm going to be folding the emin allowance inside using a tracing wheel i'll trace a portion of my trouser pattern on the emin allowance area and I'm going to be marking out what I traced out so that when I turn this in, it's going to lay nice and flat. Next thing I'm doing is I'm going to be adding seam allowance, although I don't add seam allowances to the front of all the trousers that I make. But for this particular one, I'm going to be adding seam allowances to the front and I'm only adding it to the side. I added 0.75 inch and I'm going over to label this as my front pattern. Before we move to the back, let us create the pocket area. From the side seam, I'm going to be marking the length of the pocket. I want it to be 6 inches deep. The whole idea is to allow your hand to pass through properly. What is a pocket if your hand cannot pass through? And also from the side seam also, I'm going to be marking, I think I marked 2 inches inward. Yes, I marked 2 inches or 2.5 inches thereabout. And I'm going to be connecting that marking to the 6 inches that I marked earlier, the depth of the pocket that I marked earlier, 6 inches. So this is going to be the opening of the pocket the next thing i'll do is to extend that guideline all the way to the waist area so this line would help us to draft out our pockets later on i've cut out my front and i placed it on another pattern paper this would help me to plan the back and i extended all of my vertical lines the waist the crotch the tie the knee and also the ankle area you would understand this later on on the waist area i added two inches on the waist area this is in addition to the seam allowances i'm going to be working with on the crotch area i came down by half an inch and i extended the line after that i added one inch extra ease for the back you always need to add an extra ease to your crotch area for the back and i marked 1.5 inches also on the knee line i marked two inches and i connected all of the points together i also marked two inches on the tie line too and also on my ankle line i marked two inches so it's always good for you to have an excess of seam allowance and for it not to be enough because when i was sewing i had a lot of seam allowance to work with and i was very fine with it because it's better to have an excess than for it not to be enough on the waistline there i'm going to be coming up by one inch this is because you need to raise the waistline of the trouser in order to accommodate the butt properly and i drew a slanted line to the side of the trouser so what i'm alighting there is going to be the back pattern of the trouser and i'm also going over to label that as the back pattern I'm done trimming out the back and I'm going to be detaching the back away from the front. This is what your pattern should look like once you're done. The back would be bigger than the front. Now for the pocket, I'm going to be placing a new fresh pattern paper underneath my front pattern. Remember, we still need to plan our pockets. So I'm going to be putting a fresh pattern paper underneath 
the front and I'm going to be tracing along the side all the way through the crotch area all the way through that guideline and through my waist area remember our seam allowance is already added to the waist area and this part I'm tracing is going to be the pocket bag once I'm done tracing I will detach and then rule out what I traced I added seam allowances to the side and also to the end of the pocket so guys this part I traced out is the pocket bag now moving over to the pocket facing I placed a new pattern paper underneath the front pattern and I'm going to be tracing along the pocket opening okay so I'll trace along the pocket opening I'll just put a mark along the seam allowance to be straight this makes it easier for you to sew I'll trace along that line trace along the pocket opening and also trace along the waist area I'm going to be tracing along the waist area all the way down through the guideline all the way down through the crotch area this part I'm tracing is going to be the pocket lining Once I'm done, I label this as the pocket, pocket facing rather, not the pocket lining. And I'm supposed to cut two pieces for each of these. And I'm also supposed to cut two pieces for each of my trouser pieces too, for both the front and the back. So I would have two for the front and would also have two for the back. Now for the front area, we need to do some adjustment to the waistline. And from the center front, I'm going to be coming downwards by 0 0.75 and I'll draw a slanted line to the side. This helps to eliminate any form of bulge in the front of your trouser. So guys, these are the pattern sets I'm going to be working with. I have the back pattern, I have my front pattern, I have my pocket bag and I equally have my pocket lining. These are all the pattern sets that I'm going to be working with. I have gone ahead to cut out my fabric and I'm using a white crepe. I have two pieces for the front. I also have two pieces for the back as I have indicated earlier. And I also have my pocket bag and the pocket facing. Two pieces of each one of them. So if you are sewing a trouser, this should be what you should have. I also cut out a waistband though. I'll talk about this later. The next thing I'll do is that I'm going to be sewing in the darts of all of my four pieces. Remember, we have two for the front and two for the back. After which, I'm going to be fixing the pockets. I'm done. I've fixed my weld pocket for the back. I have a detailed tutorial on this YouTube channel on how to fix a weld pocket. Also, that online class that I spoke about also teaches you how to fix a wet pocket too and for the front also i've gone ahead to fix the side pockets okay i'm gonna have to fix the side pockets for the front too and i did this on the two pieces for the front so guys what i will do next is that i'm going to be placing right sides of the front against each other because i need to stitch it down along the center front since we are going to be having a zipper by the side so i'll stitch it down by seam allowance and i'll repeat the same thing for the back also i'm going to be stitching it down and once i finish i would also sew it together by the side too i'm going to be joining both the front and the back together by the seam allowances that i have added i'm done sewing so i stitched the front pieces together the back pieces together then i joined it by the side and since we are going to be having a zipper by the side and not in the front i left about 7.5 inches opening by the side where i want the zipper to be so when this trouser is worn it's going to fall on the left side of the body you could also put yours on the right side but i want this to be on the left side of the body i also have this waistband over here it is 1.5 inches and it's on fold so that's a total of three inches then i folded in half an inch so what this means is that this waistband is a total of four inches then folding in half an inch i would have one and a half inch when i eventually fold it back in and i also ironed in interfacing for more structure and more durability so i'm going to be showing us how to fix this now in order to fix the waistband, I'm going to be grabbing my waistband 
then i'm going to be opening up one part that i folded in this is the right side of my fabric of my trouser i'm going to leave about one inch away because i added an extra excess to the actual waist measurement i will pin it down then i'm going to be sewing this all around all the way down so you can see i'm just sewing one part of the waistband down i am not sewing it together this way so i'll just go over and then sew this all around the waist i'm done stitching the waistband to the waist so what i will do next is i'm going to be fixing the zipper yes that's the next thing that is to be done so i'm going to be using an invincible zip of the same color and i'm going to be pinning my zipper along the opening i left and i will stop at the crease line remember i folded my waistband into two i'm going to be stopping just at the crease line so let me pin this down and show us how it looks like i'm done pinning and this is what it looks like okay so this is the front the front pocket and this is the back pocket side on the inside i think it will make more sense from the inside this is what it looks like on the inside can you see and i'm going to start sewing from where my crease line is starting from all the way down i'll repeat the same thing for this other side so and take it all the way down so i'm going to sew this now and then show us the next step remember you're not sewing it up until the very end of your waistband you're stopping at the crease line so it is important for you to iron as this would also serve as a guide for you when you are sewing i'm done fixing the zip let me zip this up for us to see okay come up come up okay I'm done and I stopped at the crease line. I also tried as much as possible to make this align. It was quite a struggle. So the next thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be pushing the remaining part of my zip. I'll push it this way. This part is quite tricky, but it makes your work come out nice. I'll push it this way and then turn over the remaining part of my waistband. Secure this with a pin. And I'm going to be trying as much as possible to sew this down this is called this is more like a blind sewing so i'm going to be sewing this down very close to my zipper i would also repeat the same thing for this side push my zipper to this side turn the remaining part of my waistband and i'm going to secure it with the pin and equally sew it down so it allows your work to come out really neat and really good so i said all you have to do is to turn this over and go ahead and sew it down you can see i've not even trimmed anything and you would simply turn it inside out and this is what your waistband will be looking like on the inside you see how neat it looks very neat your zipper is secured and it looks so neat you can even apply this to your skirt also I would also repeat the same thing for this side. So I want to take you guys through the process one by one. Let me zip this up to be sure that they are intact. So this is how my waistband is going to be. Okay. And on the inside, it looks neat. I love the way it looks like on the inside. So what I will do next is I'm going to be trimming off the excess I have. Trim it off. I will repeat the same thing here also. I will turn it over and I'm going to be stitching the remaining part of my waistband down. Now from experience, I what I do is that I use my aiming tape. I'll place it in between the waistband iron this down and then go over and do a nice top stitch because if you use only this over time as you wash the gum would wear off so you that's what i'm going to be doing i'm going to be laying this in between i would iron it and once i'm done i'm going to be doing a top stitch and my waistband is going to be ready i'm done ironing the aiming tape in between you can see that it is properly stuck together but like I always do, I will just go over and give it a very nice top stitch so as to keep the waistband in place because over time, the gum would wear 
off. Once I'm done, I would also secure the trouser along the M. Give this a very nice press and this would be the end of this tutorial. So I'll just fold it in by the seam allowance which I added and I'm going to be giving this a really good press. So I'll show us once I'm done. True guys, I know I said I was going to show us how this is going to look like as I always like to wear any clothes I make on the mannequin. I've not ironed the M, I'll just go over and iron it after now. But because this is a white trouser and it's quite difficult wearing a trouser on a mannequin, I'm not going to be wearing this on a mannequin. I'm just going to be showing us what it looks like. This is the front, this are the front pockets. And I have the back over here, the welt pocket at the back. And this is the trouser all the way down to the M. I have not ironed it along the M. So once I iron this down, this is going to be laying very flat and very nice. So if you have found this tutorial helpful, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, kindly subscribe to the channel. Turn on your notification for more videos also. And goodbye and see you in my next video.